need the doctor. I just need to get some information. Yeah, I can hold. Alex, be patient, okay? Dad, I can't fly without gum. Alex, please. Is Andrew going to die? No. I told you he's going to be fine. Yeah, who is this? Yeah, I, I just want to know his condition. Andrew Stone. Dad, I'm hungry. Oh, come on, Alex. Alex, there's food on the plane. Give us a break, all right? Are you sure? Thank you. Thank you. What? what did he say? Well, it's not serious. It's a broken collarbone. Who said? What the nurse? She just looked at his chart. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh a collarbone? How That's so nothing. That? I broke my collarbone and fall out of a tree when I was 12 years old. I was playing baseball the next day. That's nothing. I Wait, know. what happened? I don't understand. The hospital man was... Are you sure? Oh, oh come on, Al. We got good news. Accept it. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go surprise Andrew. Andrew did a hacky sack 465 times once. He said it was a record. Too bad hacky sack's not an Olympic sport. I'm really hungry, man. Me too. There's a kid who came home with Andrew's spring vacation. What's his name? Uh, Benjamin. I think uh, Andrew calls him Benno. Benno. Benno, how you doing? Seen Andrew? How is he? Uh, he's hurt real bad. No, that that was a mistake. They said it was just a broken collarbone. No, he hurt his head. He's hurt real bad. What happened? We were taking a break from finals. We went to this party. I was driving. I see these headlights in my rearview mirror. I turn to Andrew and I go, look at this fool. But I don't get to say it because he hits us. I, I don't even get a bruise. Turn to Andrew. He's just sitting there like he's asleep. He 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 hurt his head. Oh, they said it was all right. Why did they say it was okay? I I knew it was a mistake. It's a big house, Dad. Mistakes happen. Are you the parents of Andrew Stone? Yes. yes. I'm Dr. Geller. I'm a specialist in neurosurgery. Would you like to see him? Please. Oh, please, yeah. Please. Oh, I'm sorry, no children. What? I want to see Andrew. Uh, honey, if Mom, see I want to see Andrew. Andrew. Stay here. I want to see Andrew. Alex. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, stop it. It's okay, Terrell. Stay with me. We'll take turns. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to see Andrew. How is he? Maybe we should wait until I can speak to you and your husband together. No, no, I want to know now, please. I want you to be prepared for the worst. Andrew has suffered severe brain injuries. He's in a coma. It's impossible to say now when or if he will come out of it. Mm. 
Andrew sustained what we call a coup, contra-coup injury. The impact drove his head back and then forward. The CT scan showed large subdural bruises in the front and rear portions of his brain. We found massive hemorrhaging and edema. In order to remove the swelling, I removed part of his skull. That's standard procedure in cases of this type. Those tubes allow us to monitor the pressure, drain the fluid. Gonna be all right, Mom. I know. I don't they allow no kids? It's unfair. Yeah, it is unfair. Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone. If you have a headache, um, I can get something here. So, uh, Mr. Stone, Andrew says that you do film? Documentaries, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's always saying how cool you guys are, you know, not typical and stuff. Yeah, he gave me one of your wife's cookbooks. Except Lara can't cook, and every time it's her turn to do dinner at the house, we have to order out. <laughs> Man, making films, that's my dream, you know, to be the next Spike Lee or, or whatever. Well, just a boy in a dream. Jerk. You don't do anything worth doing unless you dream. How you doing, Benno? Good. <clears throat> Can I have your name, please? Benno. Benno what? Benjamin Lucas. Do you have a valid driver's license? Can I see it? Why? Who are you? I'm an attorney. You were driving drunk last night. You almost killed two people. What are you saying? That's not true. He caused a very serious accident while driving under the influence. It's a miracle that the other driver is still alive. No, that's a lie. Do you deny drinking? Were you drinking, Bano? Like one beer maybe hours before at the party. You're lying. You were drinking and driving. And you will be hearing from my office. Uh, whose attorney are you? Were you drinking, Ben? Were you driving? Did you cause this accident? No. The guy hit us from behind. She was the one who was drunk. I mean, she, the cop saw the whole thing. He was right there. Please, uh, Sister Stone, I mean, you gotta believe me. I was not drunk. The kids say it's like he said. The other guy was drunk. It was totally his fault. There was a cop right there. He saw the accident. <sighs> He admitted he was drinking. A couple of beers, hours before, they gave him a drunk test. If he did this to Andrew, I will never forget. Benno swears he's telling the truth, honey. He's Andrew's best friend. He wouldn't do anything to hurt him. You know, the kids are going to have to leave after visiting hours are over, so I have to find a place to stay. I'm not leaving Andrew. No. How you doing? Okay. Hi, do you need any more information? <sighs> what are you still doing here? Why don't you go home, man? Look worse than you did when they brought you in last night. <laughs> All right. Hang in there, okay? Doctor, um... The boy you were just talking to, the one who came in last night, uh, was he drinking? I mean, was he drunk? 
My son was in the accident and he was very badly hurt. I just have to know what happened. I think he had a beer or two, but he tested zero zero. Blood alcohol test zero zero means completely sober. But it was the other guy that was wasted. The other the other driver. Is he here? Is he badly hurt? Yeah, no, 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 scratch on him, but we had to admit him for observation. What do you mean you had to? Uh, they keep the police from hauling him off to jail. Why? See, his daddy's on the board. So some of the staff are looking out for him. We're not happy, but hey. We're one big happy family, right? Don't bother calling the motel, honey. The kids are taking care of him. They protected him. <sighs> protected who? The, the other driver. You know, his father's a big deal here at the hospital, and they just looked after their own. Uh, Laura said she would watch the kids for as long as we need. They'll be fine, Tara. She's made a big hit with Alex. We'll see you tomorrow, Allie. Bye. I love you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Laura, I can't thank, thank well. you enough. Well, I want to do something for Andrew, so. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Don't worry, we'll take care of him. All right, all right. Um, there's a problem with the insurance. We gotta take care of You need me? Well, no, I can do it. I'd like to get back up and see Andrew. Okay. Well, he said a policeman saw the accident, so I, I want to talk to him. There were several officers at the scene. Yeah, but this one was an eyewitness, so that was unusual, right? So, so you probably know who that was. It's a big department, ma'am. Why can't I talk to him? I mean, is there some reason you don't want me to talk to him? We'll check into it, okay? Where can we reach you? Andrew. Andrew, you were in an accident, but you're going to be fine. You're going to be just like you were. He can't hear you. How do we know what he can hear? Mom and Dad are here. We're here. We love you. We love you so much. My name's Garza. The hospital told me you were kind of living here. Is there somewhere we can go and get a cup of coffee? It's about your boy's accident. I'm the cop who saw it. Sorry I didn't get to you folks before. I work full shift. Coach Pee Wee soccer in the off towers. We're in the playoffs. So you actually saw the accident? Yeah. Man, how often does that happen? Yeah, I usually see him afterwards. Never actually saw what happened before. Well, we want to know everything that you saw. No problem at all. That's why I'm here. So I'm on patrol. Traffic's real light. I see this guy coming northbound. He's all over the road. Like a bat out of hell. <laughs> right after him. I am definitely gonna nail that citizen. I just tapped him. But that's all it took. I knocked him right off into a light pole. He was real lucky. Lucky because I was right there and the ambulance was there in no time and the hospital's only two minutes away. Okay, the, the other driver, what happened to him? Nothing. He was lucky, too. He should have been nailed right there and then. Why wasn't he? Well, turns out there was another witness. A friend of his driving behind him. Says that the uh, VW caused the accident. Started screaming about harassment. We didn't get him any medical care. She demanded on taking him to the hospital herself. And you let her? Yeah, no choice. Turns out she was a lawyer. Started invoking the guy's rights and all that good stuff. Anyway, 
I'm not really supposed to do this, but that's my report. I thought you'd like to read it. I got beliefs about this stuff. What stuff? Drunks using their cars like weapons. This guy ain't gonna get away with it. Well, I better get back to work. I hope everything turns out okay for your boy. Oh, it will, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Gary Curtis Gordon. That's the guy. Andrew, your mom and dad are here. Your mom and dad are here. We love you, honey. We love you. Alex and Allie are here. They miss you. Jeff. Jeff. My God. Oh, darling. You can see the hematoma. The bruises here, and the swelling is being relieved where the bone flap was cut away. This is a good sign. If it continues, it means that the coma may be ending soon. Thank God. No, it's only another beginning, I'm afraid. When he leaves here, Andrew is going to have to be put into an extended program of physical and psychological therapy at a rehabilitation clinic. He may have to learn to think and speak all over again. Will uh, Andrew ever be Andrew again? He may come out of this just fine in time. What you have to realize is that the accident was day one of a whole new calendar. You're going to have to get used to living by it, day by day. This is great. His body's fighting its way back to consciousness. Here, son. We love you. He spoke. He said something. Yeah, I think he said thank you. Okay. There we go. All right. Tell me your name, just for the record. Okay, folks, it just needs time. He didn't even leave him his name. Just time, Terry. He's gonna be okay. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Pajama Rodeo. Tonight's main event, getting Alex to bed. In approximately four, three, two, one, and he's up, ladies and gentlemen, and first goes the left shoe off the bed. It's got to clear the bed. The right shoe's off. Oh, good, good, good. And we've got the left. Where are you going? This is my plane. Waiting on you, ma'am. No sweat. Captain Jeff will have you there warp speed. What do you have to watch this for? He wanted to, honey. It's the only way he gets to see his brother anymore. Hey, I'm taking your drawings to Andrew. I wish I could take you. It's okay, Mom. It's the rules. Love you. Here, Mom. Oh. Tell Andrew I hope he doesn't hate this. Will he understand? Oh, he understands everything. I'll be gone only a couple days, okay? We'll be all right till your dad gets back? Yeah, sure. I mean, all he does is draw and clean his room anyway. Okay. Bye. Bye. I wish we'd find a rehab closer to home. We could afford to see him together for a change. Next time, it's your turn. Actually, this is my turn. Well, I'm only going because of the court here. You said you didn't want to go. It's just some preliminary thing, there. You gotta show up for everything. They can't think this is just another case.
since you can go outside, they suggested I get you a protective handpiece. Fine one. And Ali suggested I go to a, a skating rink. She's afraid you're gonna hate this. It's a hockey helmet. It goes with everything. You wear it whenever you go outside. Peanut butter gumball. That, that doesn't. That sounds un, un, successful. <sighs> Strawberry. Unsuccessful is the perfect way to describe peanut butter gumball. No, it's not. It's 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 not the it's not the right word. It's it's important to try to. Put the right word with the right thing. Cool helmet. Thanks. <laughs> Andrew works very hard in his word finding. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. he he gets a little frustrated, but he's young. He's got a great spirit, a, a wonderful positive attitude. We're very pleased with how he's coming along. He says. He wants to go back to Brandeis. He had a math scholarship there. Now, he, he's always excelled at everything that he's done. You know, it's kind of a family joke. Uh, Andrew does everything right. Do you think he has a chance? It's common in brain-injured patients, the uh, need to go back to the time before the injury to reclaim their past identity. Mrs. Stone, we just don't know yet uh, how great his deficit might be. His deficit? Today we finally see him, you know. Who? Gary Curtis Gordon. Mr. Davids. Hi, we met on the phone. I'm Terry. This is my son, Andrew. We're here for the hearing. Yeah. Terry, so... What are you doing here? I, I told you, this is just a motion for a preliminary hearing continuance. Yeah. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Gibson presiding. Call the first case. Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Gary Curtis Gordon. Warren B. Shipley for the defendant who is not present today. At this point, we would like to request a delay. People have no objection, Your Honor. So ordered. The clerk will set a new date for a preliminary hearing. Let's hear the next case. I flew all the way from Ann Arbor for this. A delay. I told you. No, you didn't. I left a message on your phone. Maybe you didn't get it. But, so, what's going to happen? Looks good. I've got a policeman as an eyewitness. Yeah, but, but what kind of punishment? 90 days to a year in jail, maybe. No priors. Fine. Probation. Probation? I'm sorry. I've got another case. Don't come until we tell you, okay? These things can take a long time. Well, meanwhile, what about Gary Curtis Gordon? Oh, does he just go have this grand, normal life? I've really got to go. My office will be in touch. Well, to them, it's just another case. You know, it's just another thing to get through. They're not going to do anything. He's going to get away scot-free. Give it a chance, Ter. It's just getting started. He's going to walk, you know, probation. Uh, a slap on the wrist. 
You know, if we want any justice, we're going to have to do it ourselves. You know, we're going to have to sue. I don't want his money. Well, it's not about money. It's, it's, oh, God knows we're going to need it. We don't sue people, Tara. The bills will get paid. We've always managed somehow. Done pretty well taking it as it comes. He says he wants to go back to Brandeis, you know. He's afraid of falling behind. Can we talk about this? Alex wants to know how Andrew likes his pictures. Don't worry, it's just another migraine. A migraine? Look at him! He's already medicated. Look, he'll pass through it. It's fine. Just get through it, buddy. You'll be okay. It's gonna happen every now and then. It's not dangerous. He just goes on with his life. It's living in this beautiful house, protected by his family. It's as if nothing happened. You shouldn't have gone to his house, Tara. What if he had seen you? I don't think he sees anything. Yeah. He doesn't care. He never came to visit Andrew in the hospital. He never called. He's never shown... A moment of concern. You know, not, not even a cheap get well card. He doesn't care. You go in. You go in. We go. Goodbye. Come on. Bring it on. Speak. Speak. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, they scorched the screen, folks. All right, let's do it again with some tongue. A little tongue. Oh, oh. Are you okay? What are you, stupid? You idiot, you don't touch his head. Hey, hey. Gunno, Gunno, come on, come on. Just chill. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm an idiot. It's okay, it's just... Uh, there's still uh, a whole hunk of... hunk of missing skull under there, so... <laughs> all right, you know, we're going to Gosh, guys, thank you so much for... For coming to say goodbye. Yeah, no problem. Of course man. No, no, it's problem. so cool. Well, I guess uh I guess I'll see you next semester then. They're taking you back? That's that's great, man. Yeah. Yeah, we'll save your room for you. Totally, totally. Yeah. <laughs> you have a wonderful family, I mean just wonderful support. And I know that you're gonna meet every challenge that comes your way. Right, my recommendation. 
Andrew, it's premature. No, I told you the deadline's it's next week. It's premature for you to think about going back to college. Hey, why don't you give your room a check? Your parents and I have some uh, paperwork to finish up. Okay. Please. You both have to accept him as a new Andrew. Not capable of the things the old Andrew was. Now, there are many fine schools which can address his special needs. Oh, wait a minute. What are you saying? He shouldn't even hope? Well, sometimes hope can be just another word for denial. Wait a second. I gotta get this on tape. One last farewell to rehab hell. <laughs> Mom? Hmm? Dad? I wanna... I wanna ask you... I wanna ask you guys something, and I want you to say yes. Yes, what? Okay. I want to take the train home. Hey, I love trains too, but we have the car. What do we do? Just leave it here? By myself. I want to I wanna take the train home by myself. Andrew, I don't... Dad, It's a I... long trip. I've always used to take the train home. I think it's too soon, honey. Don't you remember when... when Allie used to take the train to school when... when... when when she was only 12? Yeah. Don't you think the new Andrew is as, as capable as a 12-year-old? The new Andrew? Oh, God, you heard that guy. Oh, I could kill that bastard. Andrew, the guy was a jerk. You don't have to prove anything to him or anyone. Yes, I do. We Americans have a, um, a dual attitude, a conflicting attitude towards food, torn between our desire to diet and to dine well. You know, one of us should have gone with him. He wanted to do it alone, Terry. He's not gonna let this thing beat him. We gotta support that. Keep going. It's a good beginning. I don't really feel like writing a cookbook. Advantages of having a head injury. <laughs> Made Laura kiss me. Never had so many people notice me. Just hit me. I didn't hit you. Why did you just hit my helmet? I felt like it. I'm starting to feel like doing it again. Why, why do you think that I'm wearing this? I don't know. You want to look like some dork retard? I'm wearing it because... Because... Right here, right where you hit me, is, is, is the cerebrum, and that is the center of thinking in the brain. The skull above that has been surgically missing, removed. Maybe he is a maniac. Let him pass. Whoa, 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 whoa! Let him pass. Just, just let him pass. What are you doing? Get his license. What are you doing? Take it easy. Then I hey, get it. Hey, pull over, Terry. Let me drive. Pull over, damn it.
Terry, do me a favor. Chill a little. You're way overreacting. At least I'm reacting. Wait a sec. What do you mean by that? That guy almost hit us. Does that bother you just a little bit? What was I supposed to do? Go in a road rage? It was no big deal. These things happen all the time. Oh, well, let's just let up. Look, we gotta keep a little balance here. A horrible thing happened to us. We can't let it take over every part of our lives. We just gotta get through it. No, we just take it. Is that what you think I do? We don't deal with things the same way. No, I think you deal with things by letting me deal with them. Like the hospital and the lawyers and the bills. You're good at the practical stuff and I'm not, including making money. I admit it, I'm sorry. Oh, don't. You always do that. What? Admit the truth? No, you admit it and then, well, you think you faced it. I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. You better get on the road. Giving you a headache. No. I bet if we step on it, don't stop. We beat the train. Imagine Andrew's face. We meet him at the station. Basketball. Oh, you... good. Yeah. It's good. Are you are you uh, gonna? Hey, I can't believe Dad's not filming this. Like the only second of our lives not on videotape. Andrew. Good job. <laughs> I found her in an alleyway. Just driving on the street. There she was. She blew me away. Little Joe's got this dream that somebody's gonna just come along and, and make her a big star. Well, did, did she ever make it? Well, I'm, I'm still working on the ending. By the way, I could use a good assistant. It pays. Or it would if that ever gets funded. <laughs> That's very funny. Come on. Um, just in time for some paella. You know, I'm, I'm working on a seafood chapter, Andrew. Oh. You like it because you're having a lot of it if I get it right. Hmm. Mm. So great to have everybody in one place. I feel we've been bouncing back and forth like a ping pong ball. Like a bungee jumper. A bungee jumper? <laughs> that's better than ping pong. Bungee jumper? That's a good one. Nice go, Andrew. Shrimp. Wow. <laughs> Alex, come on. Move, I gotta, I gotta, um, put you to bed. <clears throat> when did you start keeping your room so neat? You used to keep yours neat? Yeah, well, not when I was... 12? Yeah, well, not when I was 
12. <clears throat> Alex, come on, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta move. You know that I always kick your, your butt anyway. Checkmate! Alex rules! A new era begins! Now his butt is kicked! I mean, you're still the best in stuff. I shouldn't have won. No, 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 no. Come here, buddy, buddy. Come here. I have to brush my teeth. Can you just stop trying to help me? The whole family is just treating me like I'm somebody to help. I'm so glad to have you home. So we can all stay put for a while now. Until the trial starts. What are they going to do to... Um... To Gordon, um, probably nothing. Worst, uh, slap on the wrist, I guess. That's, that's probably why we'll have to sue. I don't want to sue anybody. I know, neither does your dad. Gotta face reality, you know. If the courts don't make him pay, then uh, we're gonna have to. It was just an accident. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. No, he was drunk and stupid, and he got in his car. It's like he deliberately set out to destroy you. Am I destroyed, Mom? Huh? I didn't mean that. Whatever they do to him, it just... It's not going to change anything. It, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. You never hurt anybody. You've, you've never done anything wrong. You've always been kind and caring. And now, in, in, in a, at a dot of time, someone who's none of these things just takes everything away. Now, we can't let someone come in and hurt us like that and then go on as if it doesn't matter. Because it matters. gotta be a reckoning. Matters. Check them out. What are they looking at? We're twins. Mom makes me wear this. I feel like a dork. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, do you wanna... You wanna get to a movie? I don't go to movies anymore. TV, junk like that. It's all a waste of time. Oh, right. Because your, uh, your brain cells, right? <clears throat> Come here. Alex. I got a brain injury. Let's, let's face it. Buddy, if you can talk to me, you can, you can ask me questions. Did, did they really like saw off half your skull? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mom says they're putting it back. So where is it? 
That's a. It's a. It's in a. A deep freeze, like a frozen pizza. Giving him breaks. Allie, I... Allie, Allie, Allie. No. Just, just. Okay. Time out for, for a second. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Um... This came this morning from Brandeis. Brandeis wants me to, to schedule an interview for readmission. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Oh, they, um, they want to see my, my records. You already have your records. No, they, uh, want to see my, my, my medical records. And to determine the, the degree of disability. What are you going to do? It says to, to call for, for an appointment. Oh, well, sh shouldn't you wait a little? I mean, do you need to think about it? Wait? I'm already here behind. I, I can't, I can't miss another semester. I know, but you may only have one chance. I mean, are you sure you're ready, honey? I was born ready. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Um... We're going to be back there for the trial in three weeks anyway, so why don't you schedule it then? We'll just kill two birds in one stone. Yes. One Andrew Stone. One Andrew Stone. <laughs> Come here. Oh. You don't have to be so careful with me. Yeah, it's so fragile. I mean, that's so fragile. I'm talking to all you big music moguls out there. Check me out, moguls. Give me my shot. I'll make us all rich. Shoot. Really? Believes it, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, well, she has to. It's all she's got. Let no me have her for a second. You know, I think it's great you're doing the interview now. Just go in, guns blazing. They'll have to take you back. Here, check this out. Uh, Andrew. Uh, Andrew. Uh, uh, What's happening? Uh, oh. Or anything I can do. God. Oh. Oh. Just, you can, you can, you can take my pain. Would you do that, Dad? Oh. Yes. Yes, Andrew. If I can, I'll take it. I'll take all your pain. All the pain, sweet boy. Yeah, every time I call, there's a new prosecutor. We'll get the job done. It's out of our hands, Terry. You will be judged. All right. Um, sorry. I just, I just need a second to, uh, yes, just to get up to date. It's time they gave us a woman. Maybe now we'll get. Okay. Some Gary Curtis Gordon, DUI causing bodily injury. How are you feeling, Andrew? Better? Yeah. It says here 
You were a Brandeis student at the time of the accident. He's still a Brandeis student. He's got his readmission in the interview this afternoon. Well, good luck. Does he always wear the helmet? Well, he can take it off. I think he should always wear it to trial. He is the victim. I don't want the jury to forget that. How about we grab some lunch before the interview? Um, I think I'm just gonna head over to the campus now. It's a little early. Interview's not for a couple hours. No problem. We'll drive you to the campus. We'll have lunch at one of your old hangouts. I'm just gonna go by myself. Oh, yeah, take some time to clear my mind. Don't worry, I'll be fine. probably be here. Yeah, he said you were in town. So have you had your interview yet? No. You're not sweating it, are you? They have to let you back. Why do they have to? Well, they'll, you know, understand. Oh. Hey, it's really good to see you. Really missed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I, um, I get to lose, uh, this soon. They're, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna put my skull back. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to, um, to remember things. I can't even remember my own phone number, so don't worry. I bet I could if, if you'd give it to me. Do you have a pen? Yes. Of course. Pen. Um, Beno said that you moved out of the house. Yeah. Um, he and I were... We're gonna get, get together I later. Can't. I just got this thing tonight that I can't get out of. It's just... Uh, well, I'll see you at school. Good luck with the interview. Your scholarship was in math? Calculus, advanced. My hat's off to you, math majors. I couldn't hack it, so I spent a life teaching drama. Would you expect to continue as a math major? Considering my... My brain injury, I was, was actually thinking of switching my major to drama. <laughs> I can't believe you're even thinking of, of dropping out, and I'm trying so hard to get back in. No, you know what? The accident made me realize what's important. Okay, life's just too short. You weren't even hurt. Oh, that's the point. It could have been me, but it wasn't. It was you. I didn't have to suffer. You did. Right. Right, so you're, what, the victim of not suffering? In the class, you had it outside, dude. It's a weapon. Hey, dude. He has to wear it. Okay? Yeah, right. It stays it's outside. For protection. Would you listen to what I'm saying? It stays he's got, outside. He's got a head injury, man. Hey, back no. off. What? what do you want him to do? Take it off and show you the back scars? Off. You back off, man. What are you telling me to do? No, what? Hey. It's cool, man. He's inside. On the house. 
you're not mentally challenged. Dude. Five bucks. Can you believe that? That Lara's like living with that Ivy League jerk. You know, they're gonna get married or something. Listen, what I'm saying is that there's all kinds of suffering in the world, man. You weren't the only one hurt when that guy smashed into us. Okay? Yeah. I figured that out, Benno. It's just one interview. If he doesn't make it this time, maybe they'll give him another shot. Oh. What if they don't? You know, he wants it so bad. Well, maybe we all have to want different things now. You know, we have to talk about the lawsuit. The criminal trial hasn't even started yet. Let's see what happens. Well, what do you think's gonna happen? He saw the prosecutor, she barely knew who he were. You know, Gordon's got this expensive lawyer, his family's got money and influence. If we bring suit, that means putting Andrew through a whole new trial. Jeff, we have to face some reality here. We've got some big bills, and they're just going to keep on getting bigger. And neither one of us is making any money. But this has ruined us. And this guy caused it. Don't you think it's fair that he should have to pay for what he did to Andrew? Nothing could pay for that. Do what you want. If you want to sue, we'll sue. Not what I want. We have no choice. Call Dr. Geller. Mom starts to twitch whenever she sees a phone. I gotta change Andrew's appointment. It's okay, honey. I'll be right there. We'll save you a seat, honey. Officer Garza, could you tell the court what you saw when you began pursuit? Yes, I saw vehicle one hit a glancing blow off vehicle two, the convertible sending it into a light pole. Did you then see the driver of vehicle one, the BMW? I did. Can you describe his appearance? The uh, driver appeared to be uninjured. There was the smell of alcohol. His eyes were unfocused and his speech was slurred. Did he say anything to you at that point? Yes, ma'am. He said, uh, and these are his words, my life is over. Officer, did you observe the driver of vehicle two, Benjamin Lucas? Yes. What was his appearance? Dazed, shaken up, perhaps in shock. You could tell because you saw that uh, his eyes were unfocused and his speech was slurred. Mr. Shipley, stop telling the witness what he saw and let him tell you. You should be objecting, Miss Prosecutor. She doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Jeff? Oh. oh. Honey. Oh, oh God. What's the matter? I can't move my arm. I'm paralyzed. Oh, it's not paralyzed, baby. Don't, don't, don't. It's my arm, Terry. I can't move my arm. Mrs. Stone, your insurance seems to have been canceled. Do you have any other means of payment? No. You may be eligible for assistance. I'll get the forms. Is he finished? He's writing a prescription, some kind of painkiller. 
What did he say? Couldn't find anything wrong. Oh, you have to be in court in a couple hours. It's almost dawn. It's scary. What could have caused this? Well, it's probably stress, you know? Why don't you just stay in bed? It'll be all right. You don't sound very worried. Well, of course I'm worried. It's just you said nothing was wrong. The pain is real, Tear. I can't move my arm. Benno, the night of the accident, how much did you have to drink? Objection, irrelevant. If that's not relevant, I don't know what is. You're objecting on the wrong grounds. He's making an assumption. I'll, I'll rephrase that, Your Honor. Benno, did you take a blood alcohol test for sobriety that night? Yep. I volunteered. Scored zero, zero. That means you passed. Yes, sir. Were you alone in the hospital? Uh, no, I uh, called a few friends of mine and they came down to lend me their support. In the middle of the night, man. You're a lucky guy to have such great friends. Benno, did one of those friends take that test for you? I mean, is that how you got the zero, zero? Objection! To what? You let him get into this area? You gotta stay awake, counsel. We're gonna take a little recess. Ten minutes. All right. Why is the judge being so hard on her? Because she's incompetent. She's gonna lose this case for us. Mom, are you gonna call Dad now? I'm, I'm really worried about him. Well, I think you'd rather hear from you. Believe that, man? This is Scott trying to pull on Ben out. Come on. Hanging in? I want the truth. Did one of you guys take that test for him? Oh, man, are you Come kidding? On. Come on. I mean, if he asked us to, maybe we would have, okay? But, you know, this, this, this lawyer's just blowing smoke, man. Look, Andrew, this guy is going for reasonable doubt. If even you have doubts, what's the jury going to think? really a lawyer. I never said I was a lawyer. Yes, you did. I went to law school. I didn't get to finish. But I know the law. You pretended you were a lawyer that night of the accident. You protected him. Why? Why? He almost killed my son. Gary could have been killed, too. He was driving drunk. Oh, come on. They were all drinking, including your son, probably. And that kid, Benno, caused the accident. I saw it. He was drunk, and he got his little friend to take the test for him. And I will swear to that under oath. Why would you, why, why would you do this? Why all the lies? Can't you see that we're on the same side here? Your son and Gary are both victims. Oh, please. A Andrew did nothing. Nobody does nothing. This trial's over anyway. I'm a defense witness. You approached me to talk about my testimony. That's grounds for a mistrial. It's so obvious that the judge sees that there's no case against Gary. And when I report this, it'll be all she needs to throw it out. And we can all start living our lives again. Mom, I just talked to Dad. He's, he said that, um that he's in really bad pain. Oh, honey, I think I wrecked everything. What happened? Uh, the trial, I just, I just made the stupidest mistake. Mom, I don't care about this trial. I'm gonna go see about Dad. Excuse me. Oh. Don't worry about the judge, Mrs. Stone, okay? She always likes to chew up the new prosecutors. Uh, yeah, um, I have to tell you something. I, I've done something really stupid here. I've talked to a defense witness. Oh. I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, somebody did. Well, well, who did you talk to? What did you say? Well, I don't even know her name. Um, she was at the hospital. Uh, she'd seen the accident. She was talking to Benno. She claimed she's a lawyer. Oh, Michelle Barker. You know her. Everybody on this case is well acquainted with Michelle Barker. It's okay, don't worry. She's not a defense witness. 
Shipley would never let her near the stand. She's completely unstable. She's obsessed with trying to protect Gordon. Why? Same reason you're protecting your son. She loves him. Love makes us do weird things. He's the nation's number one killer, you know. Please, it is not the same thing. Well, it is for her. Mom thinks it's just mental. Maybe it is. What difference does it make what, what the cause is? They're in pain. Thank you. Is there anything I can do? You're doing it. That night, when the phone rang, I couldn't help picturing what happened. I kept thinking if I could just roll back the tape, stop it, do something, anything, put myself in that car in your place. Dad, there's nothing you could have done. I couldn't move. Terry had to keep us going. Like she always does. Got the tickets. Got the kids ready. Oh, she's always had to be the grown up. I felt so helpless. I couldn't move. met someone. Why shouldn't you? We're sort of engaged. Sort of? Listen, I wasn't being honest with you because I wasn't dealing with you as Andrew. But as someone less than you are. And I'm so sorry. Anyway, I'll, uh, see you at school, okay? Hey, Laura. Do you, um, tell me the truth. Do you think they're really gonna take me back as, as a real student? The edema has finally gone away. The brain is back to its normal size. Well, there's no reason we can't replace the bone flap whenever you're ready. It's gonna mean another round of surgery, more time in a hospital bed. But when it's over, you'll finally be able to get rid of your pretty plastic hat. And then what? Then it's up to nature. We'll have done all we can do. Well, the prosecutor says that it should go to the jury tomorrow. I don't know what they're going to do. Here, I'll, I'll get that. Why don't you get some sleep? It's okay. Why don't you believe that Dad's arm is really paralyzed? Oh, I do. Honey, we are under such stress. It's, it's a wonder we aren't all paralyzed. Dad gets mysterious aches and pains. You know, they come and they go. If this trial doesn't finish us off, this hotel diet will. Mom, I was with Dad, and I asked him if he would 
take my pain from me. He said, yes, yes, of course, yes, Andrew. And, I mean, he, he really took it seriously. Do you think something like that is possible? He loves you so much. I know. I know that you and Dad would do anything for me. But, Mom, that, that scares me to think that you would hurt yourselves for me. Gary Curtis Gordon. The charge of felony drunk driving, guilty. The charge of intent to cause bodily injury, guilty. The charge of reckless endangerment while operating a motor vehicle, guilty. There will be a separate hearing to determine sentencing. We'll let you all know that date. To determine the appropriate sentence. The court will be taking into consideration several factors. Oh. Oh. Mom is gonna kill you. Oh, Sorry. Oh, be prepared, everybody. I think. It's octopus. Hey, give me a break. Experiment. Calamari. Mom, it's gross. Hey, just be happy he's not a chapter on broccoli. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, that was pretty good. The guy works for a record company. He was literally driving past and caught little Joe's act. It's like the classic American dream story. Is he going to, like, make her a star? Yeah, he's going to record her. Who knows? The point is, it was like in a million to one shot. Just shows it can happen. They're gonna have to fund the film then, right? Yeah? Well, I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> hey, Mom, look at this. Little Joe's gonna be a star, maybe. Hmm. Something came from Brandeis. Is it, um, is it, is it thin or fat? Thin is a rejection, and fat has got all the, uh, ad admissions forms in it. That is fat. That is so fat. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I got Alex mm. A few rounds of, um, John Rodeo. Mm. At the octopus chapter. Calamari. Hello. It's it's Michelle Barker. Don't hang up, please. I have to talk to you. Gary's sentencing is next week. I know. Why are you calling? I uh. I loved him, and I did everything that I could to help him, and it didn't mean a damn thing to him. Who is it? Now I'm gonna. It's quite I'm going to help him the way his mommy and daddy should have done a long time ago. And Gary's been arrested again for drinking and driving. Another accident. It was last week. It was out of state. No one was hurt this time. His parents are, of course, keeping it quiet, protecting their baby. They know that if the judge hears about this, she'll throw the book at him. Why are you telling me this? Because now I, I think that we both want the same thing. Are you going to report it? I can't. I can't. So... So that's why I'm telling you. Oh. Wait, wait, what do you... What, what are you doing? I am going to call the prosecutor. Wait, isn't this... Don't you want to talk about this first? He got drunk. And he crashed into somebody. Maybe now he'll go to prison where he belongs. Mom, I don't, I don't want someone to go to prison. Maybe he needs help. Well, he's never going to get the help he needs if everyone keeps protecting him. Whatever they do to him, it's, it's, it's not going to change what happened. Would you, would you help here? 
Maybe we should listen to Andrew. To your car. He just wants it to be over, honey. I'll talk to him. It'll be okay. Why are you guys treating me like I'm the bad guy when it's so obviously the right thing to do? The refusal to accept any responsibility, the complete lack of any remorse to Andrew Stone and his family, and the fact that you repeated your crime leave me no choice. I'm giving you the most severe sentence the law allows. Two years to be served in a maximum security prison, beginning immediately. Oh, no. Mom, are they taking him to jail right now? Mom called. She's in town. You have to call her right away. You got another court thing about the lawsuit? Something about how much you can sue the guy. Yeah, I know what it is. I'm not going. Have you seen my lip book? What do you mean you're not going? Andrew, the guy who hit us is going to be there. Aren't you even curious? Man, you believe he's out of jail already? What did he do, like, nine months? It's ridiculous. I got finals. I got to study. I'll help you study later. No, no. You know my rule about this. I mean, they're going to pass by myself. Or not at all. Okay, Andrew. I'm just offering my services. Thank you. I appreciate it. Listen, man. Your mom really wants you to be there, all right? Benno, gosh, I'm not going. How many times do I have to look at the great victim? I'm sorry to, uh, keep you waiting. Please, come in. Good to see you, Scott. You too, Warren. Mr. Stone wanted to be present for the deposition. I'm sure he did. Why is she here? She has a right to be here, Gary. And I don't have any rights. All right, and what we have here this morning is a deposition explaining Gary's assets. Andrew's fine. Headaches are almost gone and he's back in college. Not quite the honor student he used to be. A student loan doesn't quite go as far as a scholarship that he had before the accident, but thank you for asking. I uh, have prepared a statement of his holdings. As you know, he had minimum liabilities and he has no assets of his own. I saw where he lives. He has assets. Gary still lives with his parents, but since he's over 21, they are not responsible. Oh, that is obvious. <clears throat> Scott, Gary has not even been on parole for a month yet. Having served less than half of his sentence. And he is already drawn back into this endless lawsuit. That you delayed by every means possible. It was very difficult for Gary in prison. You can't talk to me. I would rather speak to your attorney. Thank you. Sending Gary to a maximum security prison was not appropriate. And I feel that he may be scarred for life. Oh, is he the victim now? Okay, terrible. I mean, do you want to talk about scarred for life? Excuse me. How much does he have to suffer to satisfy you? Tell me, when will it ever be enough? Never. It will never be enough. Mom's book. See, looks like this. That's great, man. That's going to sell a lot of books. That's hey, really nice. I think our bestseller you there is going to change the eating habits of America. Yeah. Um, could you guys go set the table? Come on, kid. Mom and Dad need to discuss. Are they going to fight? Well, they don't fight. They just discuss. You know, there's another hearing coming. 
I think we should both be there. What's the point? He says he doesn't have any money. Huh? His parents will bail him out. They've been doing it all his life. Would that be enough? To get us out of debt? Well, we have to make sure it is. No, that's not what I meant. Would it be enough for you to end this once and for all? What do you want, Terry? What do I want? Well, it's not the money or the punishment. It's not even revenge. I, I can't think of anything the law could do to really end this. I want my life back. And this is the only way I know how to get it. Here. Andrew, did you talk this over with your mom and dad? Oh, okay, so, so you understand, we've agreed to an arbitration hearing. It's a showdown. Both sides put their cards on the table. A judge decides whether you settle or you take it to trial. Okay, whatever he decides, it's binding. We're down here. Wait, um, can I talk to you guys alone for a minute? Okay, make it quick. You don't, you don't keep a change of waiting. I'll meet you downstairs, room B. So, I want to ask you something. I want you to say yes. Yes, what? I want to go to this hearing alone. I, uh, I don't understand. I'm 21 now. I can make a decision on my own. Well, you, you don't think that I can handle this? Andrew, no. We can't let you do it. Your mom's fought long and hard to get us to this point. She knows what we have to get. So do I. Don't you remember what, what the cop heard him say that night? My life is over. My life's not over. Look at me. He went to prison. I'm here with you guys, right where I want to be. Please, I'm asking for your permission here. Let me end this now. Okay, folks, please. We gotta go. Uh, Andrew is coming. Uh, we're gonna wait here. Honey. I am proud of you. But I can't be like you. I can't forgive him for hurting you. And for hurting me. I'm closing. No, 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 my, uh, 
My parents were supposed to be waiting here. Did you... You want anything? Uh, clearance here. Two muffins. For the price of one. You guys can come in now. Okay, it's looking good. Gordon's old man stepped in as he's up the offer. Is it fair? Well, it covers all the medical expenses plus, but uh, I think we'll get more if we go to trial. But is it fair? Uh, yeah. Then it ends now. Well, no, Andrew, we can't do that. We need your mother in here. It ends now. We got a judgment. So soon? Yeah. The agreements have been duly executed and are now in force. Congratulations. This case is over. Proceeding. We got what we need. Come on. Let's get out of here. Andrew? I am. Um... So sorry. I hurt you. I wanted to tell you that for so long. They said I couldn't talk to you. I live it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 